This week, French students celebrate National French Week. The theater department performs Clown Show the Third. And a senior talks about her passion for teaching dance, all here on the MWHS Wildcat News. Welcome back, Wildcats. I'm Edison Geiler. And I'm Jenna Reynolds. During announcements in QT last week, most of you heard administrators asking French trivia questions. This activity was a small part of the larger French week that happened from February 22nd to the 26th, with all students and teachers in French classes coming together to celebrate. Jordan Bacar and Logan Mosley interviewed those who helped put up paper poppies, create a map of French-speaking countries, and create a food display to see how these activities helped educate students about French culture. Pendant la semaine au 20 au 26 février, le lycée de Milo West a été rempli de stands à theme pour coincidere avec la semaine nationale française. During the week of February 22nd through the 26th, Miller West High School is full of French-themed displays to coincide with National French Week. With showcases for different foods in French-speaking countries, a lot of time and effort was put in. French teacher Sarah Karst, the organizer of the event, explains where she got the idea from. When I was student teaching, the, my cooperating teacher um, did it at that school and it was a big hit. Everyone loved it. It got the students really excited and involved and staff got involved and it, everyone knew it was, it was French week. It was going to be wild. Along with French delicacies by the foods room, there were idioms with literal interpretations in one English hall and poppies in another. So this year we decided to do the poppies. Um, I'd say that we had some different projects this year and were able to incorporate some new ideas while still kind of keeping the same feel of National French Week in previous years. One unique aspect of French Week is the Francophone Countries, an exhibition of various French-speaking nations. The Pays Como le Canada et la Guyane Française sont plus connus tandis que le Maroc et le Cameroon pourront se prendre sultan. We had to come up with different francophone countries and then from there we had to think about different stuff we wanted to look into for each country and then we had to go and find all of that information which for some of them took a little bit of an extensive search to try and find and then from there we had to copy it onto poster paper. Along with foods in French speaking countries, the popular lock bridge appeared by the second level teacher plan area. Students would be given a paper lock and write down something to motivate them and others around them. They would then cut a slip off the lock and tape it back over the railing. The lock bridge is actually usually a romantic thing. Lovers put their names on the locks or like put it on the bridge together and then lock it and throw the key in the scent to kind of represent that their love can't be undone and it's eternal. Um, so it's a big tourist attraction for sure. Not only did people in the French club help, but so did students in French class. I definitely liked being able to put together all the different activities that we put around the school, getting to do all the different art projects, and learning just a little more about French. Even though we are in French, you still get to learn a couple new things. But the overall entire goal of French Week is to promote French-related classes and activities and to get more students into the French community. This has been Jordan Bacor and Logan Mosley with the MWHS Wildcat News. And speaking of spirit weeks, Student Council and West Friends celebrated Spread the Word to End the Word Inclusion Week. Each day, students would wear crazy socks, sports attire, all blue clothing, and Western clothing to show support for stopping the use of the R word. Students could also sign a pledge to not use the word at lunch. And today, students are swapping outfits with their teachers. Also from last week, the theater department performed its third iteration of The Clown Show, this time titled Clown Show the Third COVID Chronicles. As the name suggests, 20 students wearing white masks with a red nose decoration took to the stage to portray life during the pandemic. The catch? Being in character as different clowns required the actors to only speak gibberish, which Annabelle Harshbarger and Maddie Christensen explored when they interviewed the cast and crew. <laughs> Hollywood West Theater Department put on the Clown Show the Third COVID Chronicles. The show ran from Wednesday the 24th to Friday the 26th and featured humor based around the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of times if you're like writing a piece of dramatic literature, you want it to reflect the time in which you're living. And so I thought it'd be really cool for us to sort of try to um, 
tackle these subjects that were maybe hard for people to go through, but looking at them in more of like a, now that it's behind us, let's sort of laugh a little. To prepare for the clown show, Phillips spoke with all the drama officers to brainstorm ideas for the skits. They narrowed down their ideas and wrote a script after that. They then spent two months rehearsing for the show. They also had help from Matt Moore, a writer and improviser from Los Angeles, to help them decide which ideas would be good for the show. Well, uh, Millard West has done two clown shows before this one, but they had different like ideas and topics, and so that's where the original idea came from. But um, the idea to do a clown show, it started with the um, drama club leaders, and they wrote out some of the skit and the show, and they got some help with it, like from our directors and a couple different people, um, and then now the show's what it is. With the pandemic, performing became difficult and the drama department needed to find ways to work around this. There are many precautions that the performers and the audience had to take to ensure that the show ran smoothly and safely, including masks as props and using social distancing guidelines. This year with COVID, we've kind of had to implement a bunch of different safety things in the theater department. Um, we space out the seats in the auditorium and then for the clown show in particular, we usually wear clown noses, but we thought it would be fun to do masks with clown noses on them. The humor from the show was a great way to have some laughs about a tough time we are all going through and also bring back some old traditions. The theater department put on two other clown shows in the early 2000s, and it was brought back for the first time this year. This has been Annabelle Harshbarger and Maddie Christensen for the MWHS Wildcat News. For sports this week, most of you have probably seen the ending to the boys basketball team's win over Westside in their district finals matchup. Going into the game, the Wildcats were already at a disadvantage, with senior starting center Evan Meyer sick out. However, behind strong performances from seniors Dustin Hatch, James Conway, and Dominic Hum, who led the team with 15 points, the team upset the Warriors. Our Strive executive producer, John Willis, was able to talk with Hum after the game about the team's performance. The Wildcats now look to the state tournament, where they will battle Lincoln Pius in the first round. The game will be played on Tuesday at 4 at Pinnacle Bank Arena, so make sure you buy your tickets through GoFan before then. And also in sports, the swimming and diving teams recently competed at their state competition at the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln. From February 25th to the 27th, swimmers and divers went up against a variety of schools around the state as they looked to take home the title. Junior Laney Woodward stood out with a fourth place finish for the girls diving team, while lone boys diver junior Jack Byers placed 16th. In the girls swimming competition, false start disqualifications plagued the Wildcats, but they ended the day with a 19th place finish. The boys team was also able to make it into the top 8 for the 200 freestyle relay. At the end of the three days, the boys team finished 15th. Congratulations to the swimmers on their season. For our final story this week, senior Vivian Gaines shows us how she has been creating choreographed dance routines for students at Fusion Dance. Gaines has been dancing at the studio since she was four, but after eighth grade, she started to help others learn dances, a change she discusses with Dana Summers and Anna Blumenthal. Take a look. Dancers convey stories through the usage of movement. While audience members see the final performance on stage, many do not see the hours of dedication and planning behind the scenes of choreographers. What started off as a passion for dancing for senior Vivian Gaines has turned into a part-time job choreographing various routines for others. I started when I was in eighth grade. It was kind of by accident. My teacher went out of town and she was like, can you go on in this dance for me while I'm out of town? So I did that and then the next year she gave me my own dance. From the age of four, Gaines began taking classes at Fusion Dance. As she grew up, she improved her technique and began dancing on the competition team. Her passion motivates her to play around with different styles and movements that shine through in her routines. <laughs> She loves dance and so her passion shows through like her dances and so it's easy to like gather that passion too. When planning out her routines, Gaines starts off with the introduction in order to capture the audience's attention. From there, she plans out formations and movements in accordance with the music in order to make the dance build. The best part is having something in your mind, like an idea, and then seeing it like being played out like seeing it come to 
to life. It's the coolest thing. Other members of the studio pull inspiration from Gaines's choreography style and are able to incorporate that into their own dancing. She just like uses her musicality really well and like knows like when to move and how like sharp or smooth to do it. And she also like uses a lot of trial and error. Like she'll try things out and if it doesn't work, she'll try again. And that just inspires me that like I don't have to be perfect every single time. Gaines spends six days a week at the studio, both teaching and attending various classes in order to improve her skills. Despite this taxing schedule, she keeps a positive mindset and is grateful for the time she spends doing what she loves. It's easy, honestly, because I love to do it, both parts, so it's it's not super difficult to have the motivation to come here. Gaines plans to continue dancing throughout college and hopes to always keep the art in her life. This has been Anna Blumenthal and Dana Summers with the MWHS Wildcat News. Before we go, Best of West auditions are today after school in the orchestra room. If you want to join, make sure to join the Google Classroom to sign up. The annual talent show run by the Tri-M Honor Society provides students with an outlet to showcase their talents, but also raises money for a local charity. The performance will be in late March or early April, so stay tuned for more information. And that's all for this week, Wildcats. To see the latest in the news, be sure to visit our online website and follow our social media. If you're interested in other stories we've covered during the year, check out our previous broadcasts. For the MWHS Wildcat News, this has been Jenna Reynolds and Edison Geiler. We'll see you next week.